hi guys welcome back to another video today we will be looking on the january 21 um, information technology exam paper so we are going to go through and provide possible solutions for the questions that were asked um, though you may see me put a response in some for some of the questions it doesn't mean that it is limited to that or um, there are situations when other answers will be accepted okay all right so let's get into this all right so this is the first um, paper to exam since the changing of the syllabus normally the paper to the paper to for january um set the standard for paper two in june um so the questions are structured a little bit different from what it is that we are accustomed to so going into your exams for june or whenever can ensure that you read your questions properly because you have um, more time you have the same time but you have less questions all right so on your screen you're seeing question one I'm not going to read the scenario I'm going to look on the question the question says state two reasons why a supercomputer is suitable for this project and the project is in this scenario above so right here we give the advantages of a supercomputer over any other computer basically once you give that you will get your marks so we know that supercomputers are great for simulations and if it is that it's weather forecast you're going to look on the trajectory of um, of a earthquake the if it is that we were supposed to get a um, a hurricane or earthquake so it basically simulates the, um, the whole activity or what would happen if it is that it is a category 4 if it is that um, a 4.2 magnitude earthquake hits so it is very good for simulations Alright, next point is that because it is the supercomputer, we have to talk about the very fast processing speed that it is capable of. Hence, it is that it would be more suitable or it would be very suitable to be used in weather forecasting. So, here I'm going to put that it is fast for um, because it is the fastest high performance system. So moving on to part B of question one, it says here, and there we have a scenario again. So it says to identify the most important hardware device that is necessary for this connection. So they're asking you basically, you have multiple small networks, local area network, and you want to connect all of them into one large network which would be a wide area network what is it that you would need or which um, it says to identify the most important hardware device that is necessary for this connection now right here you may be thinking about modem you may be thinking about satellite um, say si um, satellite signals you may be looking on um, many different um, transmission media right however to put it into context it did say that there are multiple local area networks within the Caribbean and they want them all to be connected together so because of that aspect of it right here 
the most important hardware device would be a router why is it we would use a router and this would come into part b2 because your router is used to connect um, small networks together so that you can form or communicate and form one big network so that's what i'm going to put here being that it is going to connect um, the multiple networks together to form one will also work as a GPS system on your network it will basically direct what the packets of data that is being sent by on the network to the correct location So looking on C, C state says to state two examples of industries other than weather forecasting in which supercomputers are still being used. Now, supercomputers are very expensive, so supermarkets, not necessarily, unless it is the type of supermarket like what Amazon is trying to set up or has um, set up already. So for your supercomputers, you'll find that it is used in pilot training for the same um, simulation exercise so instead of taking somebody and say it's not like driving a car where you can say brake gas um, you'd want to ensure that when someone goes into an aircraft to basically take off then they have the experience so there are situations where pilots are trained using supercomputers where the simulations are real. Um, you can also find supercomputers being used in the car industry. And it is used in the car dis industry to do virtual um, car safety test all right because we can't be paying persons to go inside a vehicle and crash it to see what impact it would have so basically they use the supercomputers again to do simulations and see how it is that certain things would pin out all right so that was question one a to C. All right. So here for question D, it says state two characteristics of desktop or personal computers that make them popular among computer users. So we can look on the fact that your computers are less expensive, right? So they're cost effective. We can look on the whole fact that you don't need training to use the, these types of computers. We can use the fact that um, they don't take up large spaces and they are portable. Portable in the sense where you can move it from one place to the next. Um, desktop computers, they are bulkier. So in terms of traveling, um, the portability aspect would be an issue, but in terms of you reorganizing your space, it is portable. Alright, 
So moving on to E. So E says to state two areas where desktop or personal computers are widely used. There's no way you should, if you see something like this, you should get it incorrect because computers are just taking over. And basically anywhere you put would have been correct, I think. So we're going to look on homes. Um, we're going to look on schools. You can see businesses, or if it is that you want to narrow it down to a specific um, business, right? You have hospitals, etc. All right. So for F, it gives a worksheet here. So the information in worksheet one below shows the sales. All right, so here we have a worksheet. And it basically states the, you'll find that the names are repeating, where these persons are from, the, this, um, the sales amount and for the months that they would have generated those sales here we have table two or worksheet two basically that summarizes the data that is in worksheet one um so it's going to be difficult to be moving back and forth but i'm going to try as best as possible to do that if you have the paper then it will be much easier for you uh, if it is that you um, don't have the paper and would like the blank copy I'm not sure if I'm going to upload the worksheet then you can um, comment below all right so here it says to identify the feature or function of the spreadsheet which was used to produce the summarized data in worksheet two so anytime it is that you want to provide a summarized data we use a pivot table so it searches through the data and it basically groups everything um, that repeats so in the table one where you have um, the person's name repeating and their district repeating you can summarize that by the person's name or by the district or you could even um, summarize by the month so the pivot table is what we use to do that all right so part two so part two says state the information that is provided when a value in the grand total row of worksheet two is double clicked now going into going into the exam it's not mandatory but it is recommended that when you're answering questions like these you state which application it is that you are using so you would say in google sheets this would, is what would happen in microsoft excel this is what would happen in um, a next application this is what would happen okay so for this question what would happen in microsoft excel is that um you would get a filtered table showing um how it is that it got those values so here where you have 7880 you tap double tap that you will see a table coming up you'll see some arrows beside the the labels and it would show you that these are the values that um were total to get this figure all right in google sheets when you click on it nothing happens so for this question it depends heavily um, on which application it is that you're using hence it is advisable not mandatory that once it is that you are writing the answers for these questions that you just state that in 
this application this is what would happen in that application this is what happens So for part two, it says here that if the values in worksheet one are updated and the values in worksheet two are not automatically updated, state two steps required in the correct order to manually update the values in worksheet two. <coughs> so again, this question depends on the application that you are using. So if it is that you are using Microsoft Excel, what you would do is that you would select a cell in the pivot table, then you would select the analyze ribbon that will pop up um, in Excel. You would click that and then you would select refresh on refresh, refresh all. In, in Google Sheets, what you would have to do is that whatever cell it is that you are updating you would basically have to go through the process of basically clicking and dragging down the formula um for it to be updated or you would have to do the whole process over again for um updating to update it in google sheets all right so here it asks um, complete the missing parameters in VLOOKUP formula for cell B10 of worksheet 2 um, to find the amount of sales during the month of March for the salesperson in A10. Alright, so let's go back to the question. So right here, it is saying now we should write the VLOOKUP in cell B10, which is right here um to find the amount of sales for this person which would be clement davis for the month of march all right so we want the system to search this table and return 1600. all right, all right so this se question says to complete the missing parameters in the vlookup formula for cell b10 the worksheet so as you know, the VLOOKUP function has four parameters. The first parameter is going to ask, or the first parameter should have the cell that you want to check for, right? In this case, it is the name of the individual, and that was A10. So we're going to put A10 here. The second cell is going to have the range which has your data. So let us scroll up. So here now, the entire table from Albert Kathleen right to um, this 5,240, that's your table. And we don't highlight the labels or we don't include the labels, okay? So that would be A3, and because we're using a range, it would be colon E7. So again, that is going to be A3 colon E7. Good. Now the next part now is going to ask for the column number that we can find the information that we want to be returned. Now the question is asking for March, his sales result for March. So here we have Clement Davis, right? And it is saying for Clement Davis, we need to return his March sales. So we look at the labels. This is the first one, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And we put the column number for what we want to be returned. So because we want the information for March, we count from row label to March and tell what number this is. So it's going to be column four. If I said row, that was an error. So column four. So this is going to be your column reference and there we're going to put four and the last part is whether we want it to return an exact result or something that is similar right 
So because we're looking for this person, we don't want any information that might include some letters. We're going to write the word false. True. Let's say there sometimes when you're searching through your phone or whatever and you would put in AT and you realize that everything with AT comes up, right? If we wanted something like that, we would put true. But because we want an exact match, we're going to use the word false. So V says, to state the change that would be made to, the, to parameter 3, which is right here, in order to obtain the grand total for the salesperson um, in cell A10. So the grand total is this column. So what we would change is we would change it from column 4 to column 5. And that's all you would write there. So right here, um, parameter 3 would change from 4 to 5, and that will, no sorry, 5, and that would have given the additional mark there. Alright, so we are now at question 2. Alright, so here again we have another scenario and this is the approach that CC is taking for IT where most of your questions are scenario based and it is going to test from multiple sections of the syllabus. The, you will read the scenario and we will go through the questions. Alright, so right here it says list the four basic components that each computer system should have. Now we know that our computers are used to do four main things, right? We use it to accept data, we use it to process data, we use it to store data, and we use it to output data. So this now would encompass the components. What do we use to accept data? We would have input, right? What do we wouldn't use the name that we would use for processing? We would write that back, so it would be processing, um, storage, and output. So those are the components. And four basic components of the computer system. So while it is that we may use the computer to do other things, these are the four basic. So this part asks, J listed a number of specialized peripheral, de peripheral devices that will be required. Complete the table and indicate the category. So here above, we would have stated the four components. From the four components, where where would the joystick, where would the scanner fall? Would it fall at input? Would it fall at processing? Would it fall at storage? Would it fall at output? So as you know, joystick is used for input. And so to your scanner. Moving on to part B. So it says, J will need to set up a wired network to facilitate communication between the computer systems. List three types of transmission media that could be used to facilitate the communication. So transmission media, as you know, we have wired and we have wireless. So here, if you list wireless transmission media then you would get those incorrect because it did say a wired network so here we would have your coaxial cable your fiber optic cable your twisted pair cables Good. 
So the next part now says to identify the transmission media in B, which would be most appropriate for the scenario described. So depending on the angle you take it from, any justification that you give for these three would have been correct. You can look at it from um, a cost point of view. If you look at it from a cost point of view, then the twisted pair cable would be would be effective. If it is that you are looking on the transmission or how fast it is that you want your data to be transmitted, then your fiber optic cables would work. The coaxial cable now would use for you would get more out of it. So it depends on how it is that you respond to this question. So the twisted pair, we said that that is um, cost effective in terms of the fact that it is cheaper, it is more accessible, coaxial cable is more accessible than fiber optic cables, and they are less expensive, so that's plus also. Um, what it is that you can transmit or the quality of what it is that you transmit um, with your coaxial over your twisted pair cable from that angle. Fiber optics are used in renewable energy and all these things. So the angle by which you answer this one would give you your marks there. All right. So here now for C. We have a table. So for this table, it says in presenting his proposal for the expansion of to the proprietor, Jay prepares the following spreadsheet, which outlines the cost of materials for one of the new branches, site rock startup. So your spreadsheet here, it will show the list of items that he's requiring and the cost and the amount for each item here. So the first part of the question asks the writer, so let us look at it while I read it. So it says to write a formula which is required to calculate the total cost in each of the following cells. So what formula would you put in cell D4? So D4 is right here. What is the formula that you would put here? And so obviously we need to calculate what would be the total cost to acquire tables, which would be type one. So we're going to multiply these two. So it would be your equal sign D4 times C4. Let us write that in this section. If you, put, if you don't put your equal sign, you're, you will not get your full mark. So the first thing is your equal sign, and you're going to put D4 times C4. I'm assuming if you use the product function, you possibly could get your mark there also. So it says here in D14, so in D14, let's go back and look. So here we have D14. And that's right here. So it means that we need to calculate the total for this column starting from starting from D4 to D12. So you could use the sum function here or it is that you could use the long method. So it would be equal sum because they did use the word formula. So sum equals D4 colon D12, close brackets. Or as I said, the long root, which is, which is equal D4 plus D5 plus. So part D says, 
To improve the presentation of the document, J formatted cell A1 across all columns as shown in spreadsheet. So we know that once we see formatted across all columns, one thing should come to mind and that's your merge and center feature. Merge and center or merge cells in um, Google Sheets. Part 2 says to list the steps taken by J to, in the correct order to apply the formatting feature. So for this question, it highly depends on which of the application you are using. If you are using Microsoft Excel, then it would be to highlight cell A1 to E1. Then you would go to the home ribbon and then you would select merge and center. In Google Sheets, it is different. In Google Sheets, you would have to highlight your cells, then you would go to the menu, um, you would select the menu option, and then when you select menu option, you would scroll and where you see merge horizontally, and that is how you would do that in um, Google Sheets. So for this question, um, as we would have said before, when you go into the exam, ensure that you write for which of the applications you are answering for. It's not mandatory, just recommended. All right, so moving on to the next question. E says to state the steps in the correct order required to create a formula to find the average of a range of numbers in a spreadsheet. Again, this depends on what it is that you are using. So for, um, and I guess for this option, for this option, it, it is the same thing that you would do in um, Google Sheets also. So I can write the answer for that one. So one, um, step one would be to make the cell active. So you have to select which cell it is that you are typing in your response in, right? So you click the cell, you see this thick black border around it, ready to accept your response or whatever it is that you're willing to type. Then step two, it is that you would type equals and followed by the word average. Okay. Average, then you would have your open bracket. Your open bracket. Your starting cell address. Then you would have the colon sign or comma in some cases, depending what you are doing. So, um, or comma, right? Then after that, now you are going to have your ending cell address. After it is that you have your closing bracket, then you will select enter or you will leave the cell and that will show you the results for that. All right, so let us move on to the next question. So we are now at question three. All right, so here we are for question three. So question three says that Shavi was nominated to serve as team lead for planning an ICT symposium hosted by Hempres Power. It says to list three groups of ICT related personnel that Shavi would need to invite. So we're looking on professions in, the, in ICT. 
so here it is that I will list three but there are others that could be used so you can look on a database um, administrator um, you can look on a programmer we could look on a web page designer we can look on a system administrator we can look on a computer technician so there are a myriad or a lot of um, professions that you could put here once it falls under the IT profession so here now it says there are two ways in which the extensive use of ICT has positively impacted the field of business. Now, one such thing that could come to your mind is the fact that we are all shopping online. So it has boosted e-commerce. So the whole e-commerce industry would have boosted it has also enabled greater communication amongst suppliers through the whole um, emailing infrastructure it has allowed you to in in terms of communication to reach more customers so it has boosted businesses clientele so that's two ways it has it has boosted the whole um aspect of outsourcing too because as you know the bpo sector is a major sector now um not sure in all caribbean islands but i mean especially for jamaica so that would have also it has reduced and it has also improved or increased outsourcing for some companies right so um there are in terms of them finding for ICT let's say for instance let me explain what I was saying there for ICT if it is that they would normally send their devices to a technician to get their item service then in some cases they can hire they would have hired a technician to basically do that in office or within the business so they need not outsource while it is that outsourcing has reduced in some areas some organizations have also increased their outsourcing because as you would have seen is that most um, some companies have their customer service being outsourced to other agencies instead of them doing it right so it's the angle so here we have a memo so it says Chavez was asked to prepare a memorandum to the director general outlining the plans for the symposium the following is an extract from the memorandum prepare, prepared using word format so let's analyze the letter or the memorandum here So here it says state one reason for using bullets and numbering in a word document your reasons may be different from mine so it makes the presentation it makes your pre your document more presentable right um for formatting whether it is that you have an ordered list or an unordered list um it highlights the main points in no particular order in the case of unordered list Okay. you might have different responses and that's fine depending on it what you can do is probably add it to the in the comment section below and let us have a discussion on it
so it says other than bullet numbering and numbering identify two formatting features use the extra using the extra from the memorandum so let us go back to it so from the beginning here we see that these are bold so that's bold we have here all caps um we're seeing indentation right here we see indentation there um we're seeing line spacing right so we're seeing spacing between right there so we have bold we have line spacing here we have underline and then we added the other than bullet points so and we have border if it is that the border is a part of it they will remember so that was those are the formatting features that were used for that question there Alright, so it says describe how to position how the positions of paragraph one and two from the extra can be interchanged using drag and drop. So one, you would need to highlight the paragraph two. So highlight paragraph two. Then now your next step would be to hold down um, so it's while you're holding or while you're pressing the right mouse button let's say right drag the paragraph to the beginning of paragraph one and then you would release your mouse so after you release your mouse you will find that paragraph one is no, paragraph two is now one and paragraph um, one is now two so it says describe the steps used to conduct spell check in a word document so this that I'm going to write would be based um, would be you using Microsoft Word So step one, we would have to select the review tab, right, or review ribbon in Microsoft Word, right, so after it is that you select the review ribbon, then it is that you're going to select spelling and grammar. After it is that you select spelling and grammar, then it is that you, once it is that you select spelling and grammar, what will happen now is that the system will highlight the errors within your, um, your document based on the language that it is set to. And then for step four, you have the option of basically ignoring or select the uh, select from a list of the recommended changes, right? On and this will repeat until the entire document has been checked. All 
right so now we're on to g g is a pseudocode so it says the pseudocode below will calculate and output the number of participants and the average age of all participants attending the IT symposium. The algorithm will terminate and display the output when an age of 999 is entered. Complete the following pseudocode by filling in the blank spaces labeled 1 to 10 with the most appropriate variables and or reserved reserve words all right so here we have start right and it is saying these this is where we're saying giving these variables the starting value so right here it says enter participants age so right here you could use the word write you could use the word print you could use the word display you could use the word output right so i'm going to use write So here it says read age and then it says while age, right? And it did say that the system will terminate when at the age of 999 is entered. So that's going to be the condition there while age is not 999 and while and do go together. So do and we will execute that which is below. So here it is saying total is equal to total plus age, count is equal to count plus one. It says set a variable here, which is total divided by count. And if you notice, or if you remember, it says that the system will calculate the average age of all participants. So right here, we are going to set this to average. Hold on right here average equals zero and we use back the same variable name so we have that there as average um, because this is algorithm it really doesn't matter if it is that you use all caps or not um, if you want to stick within whatever it is that was given then you have that option all right so right here because we're in the while statement you know we have to put the prompt and input statement again to say once after this repeat this exact statement here so here now we are going to read age again so enter another age or 999 to terminate the program and right here we are going to end or loop which is end while So what is it that the system will output? The system will output the number of participants and that was the count variable was used for that. It will also output the average age of the participants and average was used for that. Good. Then now we have stop. All right. So that's the end of question three. So moving on to question four, question four says the Senate marketing company collects personal data from customers, which it stores on computers. Say two possible effects of the improper storage of data and the improper storage of data here could be on the computer or physical because it did not specifically state in terms of the question itself. It could be linked to the scenario because they store their data on computers. So if you give answers as it relates to the use of the computers, it would also be fine. So I have that data can become corrupted. I have the fact that data can be easily accessed. And for some organizations, not everyone needs to have access to data um, schools being a, an example if it is that you are not of a certain rank then you need not know one's medical um, history or any um, health issues that a student may have all right so data um, 
can be accessed. By the wrong person and it can also cause data to not be accessed so because it becomes corrupt then basically you cannot access your data so data cannot be accessed easily um, so in the sense also depending on how you store your data to can cause that issue there's also the issue of identity theft, where persons um, can come in and steal certain information. All right, so moving right along, the next part of the question says to state two measures, two measures that can be used to protect data stored on a computer. So one, you can properly name your um, file or folders, whatever it is that you're doing so that it can be easily accessed, okay? Um, you can also add the appropriate security measures to the file to ensure that um, it doesn't get into the wrong person's hand. So whether it is that you're going to add a password, whether it is that they, it will be encrypted or anything along that line um, ensure that the data is backed up so you have a copy that you save elsewhere not to cause harm but basically just in case your original gets corrupted it is saved up to a period or up to a point All right, so 4B says to outline the function of the loop construct in computer programming. What do we use looping structures to do? So one, we use looping structures when it is that we have a particular block of statements that we wish to be repeated or looped a specified or an unspecified number of time, undetermined determined number of times, right? So like for your for loop, your for loop, we know how many times the, 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 this loop will occur, 10 times, 5 times. So that would be determined. Undetermined, you're using your while loop um, because it has a condition, but it does not state exactly how many times it will loop. Example, it will say while age is not equal to 999. So that's our condition for the while. But we don't know if the 10th, 15th, 20th, 20th, second person will enter age 999. Hence it is that we don't know how many times it will loop, but we know what will terminate to that. So that would be the function of the loop construct in computer programming. Part 2 says now, state two distinguishing features for each of the following loops end while so your while is known as a pretest loop which means that it tests the condition before it executes a block of statement right and it is used when it is that we are unsure of how many times our program will loop but we know what will what should be used to stop it from looping For your repeat until, your repeat until now is a post-test loop. Post-test meaning that it will execute at least once before the condition is tested because the condition is at the end. So normally what you have is repeat, the block of statement, and then until and the condition. So it will check or it will test the, re the condition after it is that it has executed at least once um it is used the the repeat until can be used when it is that you know how many times the system or the program is supposed to loop and you can also use it when you don't know how many times the program will loop so that is also a feature there
So here it says, you are hired as a programmer by Senes, Senes Marketing Company to write a pseudocode for a supermarket. The pseudocode should be, would be presented to the company before the source code is written. The requirements for the pseudocode are as follows. So here it says, because I need to highlight some points. So here it says, it should prompt the cashier to enter the price. That is important. And the quantity of items, which means that we need variables for those two. It says that you need to calculate the discount amount, right? Calculate it, good. Um, of, it says that you should calculate the discount amount of for of the total sorry which means that there's a next variable right there but for you to calculate this count there's a condition it says that you should only calculate give this count well sorry the amount of this count differs so if it is that the amount is greater than 500 we give a five percent discount but if it is less than we give 10 percent discount and it says now that the algorithm should output the total and the discount and this is the total before discount right so how teachers teach this may differ from my method right but once it is that you have certain things in there that is quite fine so the first thing we're going to have is the name of your algorithm so i'm going to say that this is going to name um let's say pricing system all right then i'm going to have my declaration so i'm going to have declare full on here and for all the terms that i have highlighted above we're going to create variable names for those so the first one is price, I'm going to use P, and quantity of items, so I'm going to put QOI, right? Then now for discount, I'm going to have DIS, and for total, I'm just going to put TOT. We have one for total already and we have one for discount, so we need not create new variable names. So now we're going to move into the body, so I'm going to have start. Right. Indentation is very important. So guys, remember that you need to indent away from your start. So the first thing here, it says to prompt the cashier to enter the price and quantity of item. So you can use certain key terms. You can use the word print. You can use the word write. You can use the word display. You can use the word output, whichever one you are comfortable with. I'm going to use the word write. So here now, I'm going to have, let me scroll back up. So it says that you can enter both. You can ask the user to enter both in one line or you can break it up in two. Whichever one you want to do, I'm going to do it in one. So your read statement will follow. What are the variable names that we should use here? So we're going to have read and we use P for price, comma, and we use Q U I. Q O I, sorry, Q O I. Right. So we are going to price will be stored in P, quantity will be used in that one there. Then now we need to calculate our total. So if the user entered that you, the price of a bag juice is ten dollars and you're buying ten, you need to calculate that in total. So total now is going to be equal to the price and the variable name there times the quantity, which is Q O I. Right. So after that, now we need to look on the discount but the discount depends on the total so here we need an if statement so we're going to have if the variable that we're checking in bracket which is t o t 
right what is the condition so it says now that if it is that the total is greater than 500 so put the greater than sign and we don't put the dollar sign that part is not needed so greater than 500 close bracket then right two terms there what should happen if it is that we need to calculate our discount and discount now is going to be five percent of the total so here you would have d i x equal or the arrow equal is is equal to tot times and we don't use the percentage sign so we convert it to a decimal or you would put times five put that in bracket divided by a hundred but i'm going to use the decimal which is 0 0.05 so the other way would have tot times five but you put that in bracket and then divided by 100 so that could also work whichever one you want to use but don't use the percent sign else and the else is going to be and you can write else in you write your else in line with your if so right here now we're going to have the next calculation and because if it is that it is not greater than 500 then automatically it's going to be less than 500 we need not put the condition again so we're going to have dis is equal to tot times in this case now it would be 10 percent so it is 0 0.1 and you can use the other method which i just told you about so after which we're going to close or if and that now would be your end if good so next it says now that we are to output all right so we did calculate so now it says to output the total and discount so that's what we're going to do again you could use the word write you could use the word print you could use the word display you could use the word output i'm using the word write all right and you output with suitable labels so total is close quotation comma and your verb name which is tot all right you can't use the word total at the end here and if it is that you don't if you didn't have the variable storing that all right so now let's output this count so that is right open bracket and we're going to have our open quotation discount is close quotation comma and the variable for discount which is dis and once it is that you have a start you must have a stop so that now would have been your algorithm for this Alright, so let's move on to the last question. So here it says now question 18. Write the pseudocode using nested if statements to do the following. If mark entered is greater than or equal to 70, then display the statement grade A. Otherwise, if mark entered is greater than or equal to 60, then display the statement grade B. For all other marks entered, display the statement grade not available. So we're not writing a full program or full algorithm here. They just want to see the extract. So let's get into this. So here it says, if and you create a variable that you want to check and in this case i'm going to use mark you could use m or any shortened version so the first part says if it is greater than or equal to 70. what should happen if it is that it is 
it says that you are to display grade A. So you're going to have your output and you're going to display grade A. Else, and for this one, you can put else if or you can just put the if by itself. For me, I put else and then if. So if, and we're checking for the next condition here, which to say that if mark is greater than or equal to 60. So if mark is greater than or equal to 60, then, oh, let me fix this. I left off the end. Left off the end. Mm. All right, so if mark is greater than or equal to 60, here it says we are to output grade B. Alright, so else, it says here now that we should have else, and what should be outputted is that grade, grade not available. So we are going to have our next output structure. Alright, so if for each if you have now, you need to close your ifs. So we are going to close this one. So try and have it lining up. So that's end if. And then the next if come here. So that would be your extract now for your um, nested if statement. All right. So we are now finished with the paper. And we will look at other papers in the future before it is that you have your exam. I will try and upload more. Um, past paper questions. So if you have any questions, please add them to the comment section below. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Share, tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, learning takes place over by Shelly and James channel. Have yourself a good day now. Thank you. Subscribe, share, comment.